You've got a six liter. And like everyone else, you wanna know, what cam do I use? So if I run a test with the stock cam and one other cam, I might help a few people. Rather than that, I ran four cams from mild to wild. That way I help everybody. For this test, I took a six liter LY6. For those of you not familiar with that, it is a Gen 4 six liter with variable cam timing and rectangular port heads, you know, like the LS3. Don't worry, you guys that have cathedral port heads, all of the results from this cam test carry right over to your combination. That's right, all these, all these camshafts work exactly the same even with cathedral port heads. So how do I know that? Well, I've done that test, that rec port, cathedral port, head and cam thing like a thousand times, and it always does exactly the same thing. So rest assured, these cams will work the same way on your motor as they did on this LY6. So we've got an LY6 with rec port heads on it, and what we did was run four different cams. We started with a factory LQ4 cam, then I ran a factory LS3 cam, then I ran the ever popular sloppy stage two cam. Then I ran something slightly bigger, about at the limit of the available piston to valve clearance on this combination. So we ran a comp 54-469-11 cam. So it's like a 231 degree duration at 50 on the intake side, which again, about the limit of what you can do with the available piston to valve clearance without a piston that has extra valve relief on it, like an aftermarket one. So mild, <laughs> a little bit wilder, a little bit wilder, and then all the way wild. This will show you what these cams are capable of, and not just these four cams, but basically every cam that shares these kinds of lift and duration numbers, and LSA obviously. So if you get those from a different source and they're about this, they're gonna do about that. Let's find out how these cams did. Take a look at the results. Let's get things started with the cam swaps on our LY6. Again, this is a six liter 2008 LY6, originally had VVT cam in it, but because we run the Holly HP management system, which is an aftermarket deal and not the factory ECU, we can't control variable cam timing, which I think in my opinion is a great idea because when you can vary the cam, you can advance it and retard it. If you advance it, you pick up power down low, you retard it and pick up power at the top. Now it's not gonna fundamentally change the lift and duration of the camshaft, but it can really uh, improve the power curve. It can broaden it, basically add more power at both ends of the spectrum, which is kind of cool. But unfortunately for our test, we had to replace the VVT cam timing. And to establish our baseline, what we did was put a factory LQ4 cam in this thing, in the six liter, which it was originally in a six liter anyway, albeit one with 317 heads instead of these rec port style LS3 heads. So what we have is a six liter with rec port heads. We also put a factory LS3 uh, intake manifold on here and we'll show you I'll show you when we put the LS3 camshaft in here I'll show you a comparison between the factory LY6 truck manifold and the LS3 car manifold and as you'll see there's really no difference a lot of people think that the truck manifold was designed for lots and lots of torque and that the that the high performance LS3 manifold was designed for high performance like high top end stuff that's not the case they're almost exactly the same they just look different so this is our 6 liter LY6 with the factory LQ4 camshaft in it. And it has long tube headers, an open throttle body, a Mazir electric water pump, and we've tuned it with a Holly, so it's basically optimized in this combination. So equipped with that camshaft, our six liter produced 443 horsepower and 467 foot-pounds of torque. Kind of typical mild cam, produces more torque than it does horsepower. So let's take a look and see what happened when we installed our first camshaft, which is a factory LS3 cam. So this is the factory LS3 cam, and as we can see, compared to the LQ4 truck cam, it lost power down low, anything below 4500, the LS3 cam actually lost power, lost torque down there, but picked up power out at the top. And out at the very top, out at 6500, we're talking about 45 or 50 horsepower more, so it's quite a bit out there. That, <laughs> that's assuming that you're revving your motor all the time out to 6500. The interesting thing is, the two made almost identical torque numbers. Uh, with the LS3 cam, we made 469 foot-pounds, so a you know we're talking splitting hairs there, onesies, twosies. It just shifted the torque curve out a little bit, so again, it lost power down low, picked up power up the top, 
which is kind of what we see from these performance cams compared to the factory stuff. We see the same thing when we compare stuff on the 5.3 liter. If we have the factory LM7 cam and then we run any of the stock cams, and if you haven't taken a look at that test, I compared all of the factory cams on A53 compared to that stock truck cam. So if you haven't taken a look at that, take a look at the video, it's right here. But this is our comparison on the factory LS3 versus the LQ4. There's a trade-off. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? So now let's take a look and see what happened when we install that fancy sloppy stage 2 cam on our 6 liter. So these are the results of our LS3 cam versus the stock cam, but I remember I told you that I would show you the difference between the LS3 intake and the LY6 intake. Now everybody thinks the LY6 intake, because it was used on a truck application, is a long runner, was designed to make torque, and that the LS3 is designed to make you know top end power because it was used in a Corvette and a Camaro. The reality is that the two intake manifolds are actually interchangeable. As a matter of fact, they're all but identical. So here's the comparison between the two intake manifolds, the L factory LS3 car manifold and the LY6 truck manifold. As you can see, there's really no difference. I mean, if I were just to show you those two curves, and <laughs> you would think that they're just back-to-back -back runs, basically. So that's a difference. So for future reference, LY6, LS3, it's all but interchangeable. So now let's get to our, what everybody's been waiting for. This is the sloppy stage 2 cam. This particular one was sold by Trick Flow, but it's also, you know, it was originally sold by Elgin's and it's made for a lot of different people, so lots of different people sell it. Here's what happened when we installed that cam, and look at that. That's actually a really nice power curve. That's a, a really nice gain, and no wonder the cam is so popular. It's inexpensive, and I mean, look at the gain. So what I like on this cam is that not only did it make, you know, more peak power than either one of the other two cams, peak power was up to 514 horsepower. Peak torque was also up to 493 foot-pounds, but it didn't lose power anywhere, even compared to the very mild truck cam, even down low. Um, it's not gaining a whole bunch down there in the 3,000 to 4,000 range, but I like the fact that it's not losing anything because that's usually the trade-off that we associate with a cam swap. If you go from some kind of stock thing to something that's better than the stock thing, Oftentimes, like we saw with the LS3, you gain a lot more peak power. That's really easy to do with a cam swap on an LS because they're just begging for cam timing. But a lot of times you see this kind of thing. Uh, there's a trade-off in low speed power like with the LS3. And you see that a lot. If a guy puts an LS9 cam in, it's even worse. It makes a lot of peak power, but it trades off a lot down low. Now the sloppy cam didn't do that. It just basically picked up power everywhere, which is good. Now it tended to fall off on the 6 liter, tended to fall off a little bit at the top. Admittedly, we revved this thing out to 67 or 6800, but it's doing well. And I like the fact that, again, it didn't like trade power down low. So it looks like if you were to put this in, uh, which means, to, which it tells me that we tested this on a 6 liter, but even if we were to run this on a smaller motor, it looks good for that cam because um, we've run a lot of different camshafts on the 5.3 and if you haven't taken a look at that um, the cam swap that I did comparing all the factory cams you need to take a look at that but I think that the sloppy cam would work well and Matt and the guys over at sloppy have used it uh, for a lot of things they've used it on 4.8s and 5.3s and lots of turbo stuff and I can see why it's working so well it's a good combination it's got a lot of average power which is exactly what we want from a cam now let's find out what happens when we install that bigger comp cam now we're going to take a look at our final test of our 6 liter LY6. We've got our factory LQ4 and the LS3 and our sloppy stage 2. The things are getting a little busy so what I think I'm going to do is get rid of the LS3 camshaft uh, because not a lot of people care about the LS3. I know, throwing shade on the LS3. That's not right. But let's get rid of that. Give us a little bit more room to take a look at the other cam. So we've got our uh, sloppy stage 2 versus the factory LQ4 cam. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we install the biggest of our cams, the Comp 54-469-11. Uh, and that's a Recport cam. We saw it on Recport heads and we know it's going to work really well, right? So here are the power gains with that camshaft. And as you can see, compared to the sloppy cam out here at the end, uh, you know, it was worth 498 to 541. So 43 horsepower, but 
it came with the trade-off. Anyway, let's take a look first at the peak power. It was 543 horsepower. If we compare that to the factory LQ4 cam, which also made 443, or 443 horsepower, that's a difference of 100 horsepower measured peak to peak. So that's a pretty big gain from a camshaft on a six liter. It did really well, but let's look at the whole picture here. So compared to the factory LQ4 cam, the comp cam lost power starting you know below 4,000 RPM, so it was softer down there. Compared to the sloppy stage two, it was softer from 5,000 on down, uh, and then started gaining power out at the top. So if you were to rev this thing even farther, you'd pick up more power um, compared to either one of the cams, but it would be softer down low, and especially down in the 2,500 to 3,000 range. So you probably would need more converter with this cam than you would with either of the other two. And because this was on a six liter, if you tested it on a 5.3 or heaven forbid a 4.8, um, <laughs> you'd see an even bigger trade-off here. The trade-off would be would be shifted farther out, so this cam would be less appropriate on these smaller motors than it is on these bigger motors. And that's kind of typical of cam timing. So this is about as big a cam as you'd want to put in a factory six liter with the factory available piston to valve clearance. You may be able to squeak a little bit more in, but this is a good size cam for that factory available piston to valve clearance on any of the six liter stuff or the 5.3. This is about as big as you would go. So we've shown you a stock cam, and I'll bring up this LS3 to just confuse us even more. So we can see it all. So we got, you know, small, big, bigger, biggest. Um, this kind of shows us what's going on. And maybe if I get rid of torque here, you can kind of see that a little bit better. So that way we can just see the power curves of the four. Again, this shows, and anywhere in between, if you slot another cam in, it's gonna be in between there. So this should give you a pretty good idea. This is kind of what cams do. Really small cams do with the factory ones, and the next size up is the LS3, and that sloppy stage two cam does very well. And then if you wanna go even bigger, like that comp cam, it does that. This is what they do, regardless of where they're from. This should give you a pretty good idea what you wanna do, what cam you wanna pick for your six liter. Okay, guys. What did you think about the cam test on our six liter? Did it help? Did it hurt? Was it confusing? Here's what I want you to take away from this. Not exactly what these cams did. I mean, I honestly don't care what the LQ4 cam does or the LS3 or the Sloppy Stage 2 or even this comp cam. What I want you to look at these is as a general guideline. Because you're, how many guys are gonna buy these exact cams? What I want you to know is that if you get a cam that's as wild as the comp cam that has similar specs, it's gonna do that. Or if it's in the middle and it's like the sloppy stage two, it's 227 or 228 degrees of duration at 50 on the intake side, it's gonna kinda of do that. Same with the LS3 and same with the factory cam. No matter who makes it, whatever the specs are, you can look at, especially the most important thing for me is that intake duration number. So if, if it's between the 228 of the sloppy cam and the factory LS3 cam, chances are the power curve is gonna be in between those two. And the same thing, if it's, if it's like that comp cam, it's gonna be up there. But it also know that if it's up there and it's making peak power, it's more than likely if it's that big, it's gonna trade stuff down low. Same thing with the very mild cams like an LQ4. If you put a small truck cam in there, it's gonna be better than that. It's gonna kind of be in between there, maybe a little bit better than the LS3. If you put an LS9 cam in, it's gonna be a little bit better than the LS3 on the top, but, but drop power down low. All of this, I did all this to use as a guideline. So now you guys should be able to figure out whatever cam you select, you should look at an intake duration number, slot it in where you think it goes, that should give you a pretty good idea. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Richard Holdner. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, help me out with my channel, and I'll keep making the videos.